So now we're going to go over the language acquisition process and we're, we're going to compare uh, the development sequence for children who are monolingual um, as compared to children who are simultaneous bilinguals, meaning that they're learning two languages at the same time, versus uh, bilinguals who are sequential, meaning that they learn a language later or after the age of three, uh, when we consider that the first language, the foundations of the first language have already been learned. Okay, so let's start with monolingual language acquisition. Um, and the first stage is crying. So from about the age of two weeks, children are capable of distinguishing the human voice from other sounds. Um, and their discrimination between sounds continues to progress during the infant stage. However, at this stage, the baby cries because it has not developed the necessary muscles in the mouth um, and the control of the mouth to make any other sounds than crying. So that would be the first stage. The second stage is cooing, um, and basically as the muscles in the mouth start to strengthen, the baby starts to coo or make um, sort of distinctive vowel sounds uh, in their mouth. So I'm going to show you a clip of cooing so that it um, makes it easy for you to understand the difference between cooing and crying. So that you could see is cooing. All we're hearing the child uh, pronouncing are vowels, um, mostly a, uh, u, and maybe some e uh, sounds. The next stage uh, is babbling. And around the second six months um, of the child's life, uh, during the babbling stage, the infant vocalizes an increasing number on, and variety of sounds uh, in complex combinations. So if we listen to this babbling video, you'll notice that the consonants that the child is babbling includes those that develop at the early stage. And you can see this in the table that I've provided for you, uh, including uh, p, b, m, and w sounds. So let me play that for you. Okay, so now you hear some consonants being involved. Um, I think you definitely can hear B for sure, um, as well as those, some of those early vowels that the child had already begun to um, pronounce in the cooing stage. The next stage is uh, formulaic language use, where um, at some point in their development, um, especially after the babbling stage, the child has to develop a dictionary of meanings. So the first entries into this dictionary are whole sentences of one, two, or three words. Um, so for example, the word dog would represent a number of meanings for the child, including uh, a dog, but also perhaps an animal in general, maybe something that's small, maybe something that's a physical object. Um, so what you notice is that the child is taking the label that they've learned and they've associated with a dog but they're also using that label to capture their meaning in terms of other similar objects or objects that contain the similar characteristics. Okay? And they're doing that because they, uh, you know, they don't have too many terms to work with as of yet. So they'll generalize their meaning to that one term. Um, and then with time and experience, children are going to modify and elaborate their meanings um, that they attach to words. So you can see that the one word and two word uh, utterances here um, would uh, sort of uh, look like this. 
So the one word utterance might be a, uh, an actual term like bug, or the child might, might make up a version for themselves and associate the same meaning. So guck meaning bug. The two word, uh, we can see mommy book, and the multi word be mommy has book. Okay, and then, then in the expanded syntax and vocabulary, um, the child is learning to express the semantic relations um, grammatically in word order. So, for example, to recognize that an item uh, acted upon normally follows an action word in English, the child must be able to store that information and those instances such as things that they would hear an adult say, um, eat your dinner, right, or Mary rolled a ball. So what they have to do in order to understand the sequencing and the slots in which each word goes is they have to start developing the, uh, the, uh, the idea of the relationship between an action and an object um, and the order in which the action and the object go. So um, this order processing, this understanding of, of which words come first and what types of words are they is the beginning of that expanded syntax and vocabulary. Uh, I'm going to play you a clip to show you what that would sound like. Okay, so that, that sort of shows you an idea of how uh, a child is going into the one word to two word stage. Here's a child who's a, a, a little bit more of the uh, extended syntax. The other thing I would like to add is um, that the way in which syntax develops can differ depending on whether the child is learning a highly inflected language or a low inflected language. English is considered a low inflected language, meaning that um, it, uh, we don't have as many morphemes, as many uh, suffixes as other languages would have. Uh, for example, Spanish is considered a highly inflected language because it uses suffixes um, and it uses uh, sort of morphemes um, attaching to the root word in uh, more ways than English uses. So for a monolingual English-speaking child, that child is going to develop um, and pay attention to word order uh, before they pay attention to the morpheme endings that can change in each word. This is different for a child who's learning Spanish as their first language and only language. Um, here, the child at this expanded syntax piece, they're actually going to stop paying attention to the morph morphology first, the, the morphemes and uh, what, that, what those morphemes tell us about the part of speech of the word and the use of the word. Um, and they'll do that first there and then start to consider and pay attention to syntax or word order.